Well, good morning on this Saturday, April 3rd, um, sometimes referred to as Silent Saturday before, you know, in between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. So that led me to do a little bit of research on different, um, what different Christian traditions speak of on this day. So I'm going to start with a couple readings. One is from the book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 139. Let's see if I get 139 here. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. Sorry, from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. And Sheol being um, Hebrew for the place of the dead. Uh, now Psalm 16, verse 7 through 10. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol, or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Which brings me to the primary text uh, from the New Testament that is discussed when we think about what occurred between Jesus' death on the cross, his burial, and then his resurrection. So here is 1 Peter chapter 3, 18 and following. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. In prison meaning, again, referencing to the place of the dead. So with that text from First Peter and then also Ephesians, but I don't have that one uh, earmarked. Uh, Ephesians, I think, 4, 6 through 10, talks about the one who ascended to heaven, or sorry, the one who descended um, to the dead also ascended far above others to heaven. So again, on this chilly, brisk 32 degree morning, uh, when all is quiet, um, following the story, Monday, Thursday, uh, Last Supper with his disciples, Good Friday, the trial and crucifixion and death and burial, and then today. So, like most things in Christian theology, I tend to stick with the big picture and tend to stick with that which is agreed upon uh, across the widest of tradition, and if not the widest, to look to those traditions that uh, have their roots back to the earliest traditions. We as Lutherans obviously came along in 1517 approximately with Martin Luther. Um, he never, never desired to start a new denomination. It was all about trying to reform within the church. The church did make many reformations, by, but, by, but by that time the Council of Trent in 1535, um, it was too late. The Lutheran church had already kind of taken root and was spreading. Protestantism as a whole um, and became the, the second greatest schism since the divide of the church in East and West back in um, approximately year 1000. So the traditions that date back earliest like uh, Eastern Orthodox uh, as well as Roman Catholicism um, have a pretty clear um, statement that Jesus descended to the dead, uh, descended to hell, not in the Dante's Inferno um, 
imagery but in the sense of being separated from God and they're proclaimed either in body or in spirit depending on traditions I think that in spirit is well actually Augustine in the fifth century spoke about that speaking in the spirit through um, Noah to the Hebrews so uh, one way one way or the other and God is unlimited so uh, you know I, I there's a lot of leeway there um, to speak to those who physically lived before Jesus and died before him whether you view that as the only for the righteous that hear his voice whether you view it as a second chance for any I, I kind of lean that way saying well you didn't believe before but how about now <laughs> Um, God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. I don't think that's time limited. It still leaves me and, and actually had a conversation a little bit with Dan Shanka last night before the Good Friday service about the problem of evil and true evil and how God vanquishes evil, how, how justice is a fundamental aspect of God's nature. Every bit is part of God's nature as love. Um, but. Um, things to think on. Um, again, for me, the, the greater story, and this is the story that is any Christian believes that Christ died for our sins, that um, he was buried, rose again on the Thursday, and resurrected to eternal life, not simply resuscitated as in the case of Lazarus, who then died again, but resurrected to eternal life and that gives us with great hope fills us with great hope um, a couple just updates on COVID again the last couple nights between the strip and the altar and uh, um, then the reading last night were more people in worship uh, proximity than for a long 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 time but that's because everybody's vaccinated that was present and that fills me with greater confidence I go for my second shot today so two weeks from now uh, supposedly will be a peak uh, protection but even after the single shot it was great to see some studies coming out in the last few weeks saying that the protection given just by the single shot of the Moderna or Pfizer was 80 or 90 percent so um, so things are looking up so that's that's the very very positive the the concerning part is again the variant p1 in Brazil right now I saw that latest that they're suffering 3,000 deaths a day uh, the curve is literally like almost straight up at this point as far as the acceleration and number of daily deaths. Um, here in the United States, we've not, I've not heard of any big, I've not heard, I, there, I would imagine there's cases, but very, very few such that I, the biggest outbreak I've heard on the North American continent is up in British Columbia where they have 480 cases. Again, that doesn't sound like much, but I can remember the news conference before this whole thing started where we only had 15 cases and so there was nothing to be concerned about. Well, we've done much better on, on um, so many fronts, but nevertheless having a baseline of average of 60,000 new cases a day, even though the hospitalizations have come way down, which is fantastic, and certainly deaths have come way down, which is fantastic. Um, but if these variants, especially P1 out of Brazil, ever were to take root, then uh, you know we would face the same kind of dynamics as other countries. Because once again, the virus cares nothing about anything. The only thing a virus cares about is finding a susceptible host. So, the more people we can get vaccinated the fewer people can transmit um, in a, in a, uh, there's still debate as far as how much uh, a vac fully vaccinated person might be able to carry so it's it's a lot closer to hardly ever than it is to before vaccination but it's not so far as to one person has had made comments maybe in the CDC well anyway somebody made the comment that never well never is not accurate but again, it's, it's, um, it's very, 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 very low. So I'd love for neighbor, if you are able, I highly encourage you to proceed with getting your vaccination. I'm, again, I'll have my second shot today and it's on 
even more excited about that than getting the Krispy Kreme donut afterwards. So let us pray. Holy God, on this day in between Good Friday and Easter Sunday, we know that you are everywhere. Uh, we know that your spirit permeates throughout the universe that you created and continue to create the universes. Um, and those thoughts are too mind-blowing for my simple brain to get, along, get around. So uh, it is enough to know that out of love you sent Jesus. Out of love he gathered disciples and tried to spread, spread this good news to all. And we also know that there are so many forces that oppose your work and your will. Um, we know that uh, we're often part of that challenge of not doing the right thing and messing up regularly. So we give you thanks for a church where we can confess, where we can receive forgiveness. We give you thanks for a community of others who can help lead us closer to you and closer to one another. We pray for all who are sick this day, for those who are grieving. Um, we pray in hope that uh, more and more things um, can return to, to life. Um, so help us simply be your people this day. And these things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So tomorrow's lineup, 6.45 a.m. Uh, sunrise service out at Abundant Blessings Farm, the Sanders place. Uh, so that's in Liberty. They're in, the, in our directory if you need the address. Um, we'll have the 9 a.m. online service, and we will continue those online services from now into the next com second coming or, or something <laughs> replaces it to, to enable people to worship at a distance who aren't able to worship uh, physically present. And then we will have our 11 a.m. Uh, upper parking lot, uh, Sloan Street service. And Molly Barrows said that uh, Sunday school will be held outside tomorrow in the courtyard. Um, I believe, I don't want to misquote the time, but I, you know, 10:15 ish thereabouts. Should be a beautiful day, so if you get there a few minutes early, not a problem because the sun will be shining. So have a blessed day and a happy Easter. Bye-bye.